there's a small pocket of woods near where I live that has been my sanctuary for the past several years, really since 2020 when I first discovered it and we were all trapped in our homes and it was just so needed and necessary. There used to be a lot more of it and um, things like this happened. The bulldozers came and so now there's just a small pocket. I talk about that more in the video with Renee Nunez and so if you want to know more about that you can watch that over there. But in the meantime I was going stir crazy in February because it had been cold and rainy. I was sick for a while and I just was going out of my mind and so I finally found some time when I felt okay and the weather was nice when I was able to go out onto the trails and some of it was blocked by water. There was so much water. I've never seen this much water out there. It's crazy. This is Texas. This is usually a dry creek bed. But it was really peaceful actually. At that point, the only thing blooming was agarita, and it was just all along the trail and just so amazingly fragrant. The birds were out. It's a male cardinal. There are several trees along the trails that I just have really befriended over the years, and this is one of them. I just love it. It's not completely dead, but it definitely looks that way, and there's a lot of hollowed out branches. I'm sure there's plenty of little critters that live in there. None of them have revealed themselves to me yet, but um, they got to be in there. I mean, you know, look at that. This branch always reminds me of a dinosaur. I bought a Loom Cube mobile creator kit expressly for making these videos, so I got to try it out and it was really fun. It seems to have worked. I drew one side of the tree first using stick watercolor, also called watercolor pastel. Take your pick. And before I show you the other drawing, I've got to show off my backpack that my son bought me after our trip to Caprock Canyons. He works in an outdoor gear shop and was not satisfied with the pack that I was using on that trip and so he super generous and bought me a new one and it's perfect for my art kit and the mobile creator kit and I love this pocket for the water and it's just yeah it's very roomy it's got a little pocket for snacks and you need snacks so a big shout out and a thank you to my very nice son thank you very much this is the plein air kit that I have used the most probably since I got it in around 2017 just from the school supply section and I love it. It's got pockets for everything. These are my watercolor pastels which I keep in a Ziploc bag because they get very messy and then that protects the ground too. I've got my arches watercolor block in there as well which I love those. And then I keep these, um, if I do multiple drawings, then I can peel them off and put them in there to protect them. So, And the whole thing becomes like a little lab table that I can use, which is very handy. And when I'm working very wet like this, keeps it off of my lap for the most part, <laughs> but not entirely. Sometimes I just pour it directly on my leg like I did here, but um, it dries, you know. <laughs> I'm kind of a mess sometimes when I draw, but that's okay because I'm having fun, right? So I generally start with the paper very wet and then dip my watercolor pastels into the water so it's you get the whole wet on wet effect. 
And if you watch the Caprock Canyon video, then you already heard me talking about how I generally start with just sort of color blocking in the shapes and filling in details. And then you can see here that I'm, I'm really working with my fingers a lot. Um, the watercolor pastel like gets on your fingers and what started out as kind of a practical uh, solution to just cleaning my hands by rubbing it on the paper and making it part of the drawing it just evolved into that's how I draw it. So the sun had gotten really low by this point and the tree, especially on this side of the tree, was mostly in shadow. So this particular drawing was a little heavier on the blue than the last one. Um, but I actually ended up really like this was my favorite of the drawings that I did. So yeah, there you can see how I'm using my hands just to kind of fill in some background space. And sometimes I just use dirty water. So adding in some brown, because you know, it's a tree, you gotta have brown. <laughs> they can't all be blue, right? Unless they can be. But it just adds a little bit of dimensionality and depth in color. So you don't just have a flat monochromatic blue. And I was thinking of these as a pair, so um, I don't know what I'm doing with my hand there. <laughs> I think I was talking to the camera. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's just kind of a gradual building up of detail and refining, and then I'm adding in some of the gold highlights where the light was actually hitting the bark of the tree which was mostly at this point kind of defining the outer edges. And you can see where that heavy blue line, that's the shadow side of the tree. And just filling in bark, like texture and pattern there. On the previous drawing, I had used mostly blue to do that. On this one, I did more of the yellow slash gold it was kind of a nice, like, uh, contrast, I guess. Flipped it. And then here they are together, and yeah, like I said, I was thinking of them as a pair, and I, I really like how that turned out. I didn't get enough time back there that day, so I ended up going out into the woods again the next day to a different spot, to another grouping of really big oaks that I like and um, I drew them. They create kind of like this cool passageway portal. This was late afternoon again, so I had um, shifting light, which you'll be able to see in this video. And I don't know why I kind of started out outlining the trees in this drawing, because I usually do not do that, but um, I think it was just because there was a grouping of them and it was sort of blurring together. I needed some edges, but um, yeah, the, the light was shining through or like between the trees and just creating these like really beautiful shafts of light on the ground and then on the, the sides of the tree that were facing the sunlight. I refer to these woods as the sacred woods as my sacred woods, actually, even though every now and then I do see other people back there, but it's pretty rare. And it just feels magical. Like, I really have had so many incredible experiences out there and just feeling the energy of the trees and the other plants and sometimes interacting with animals. And the end product of this drawing I wasn't really sure about it as I was doing it, but I, I just, I think it kind of captures that sort of magical portal feel. It feels a little otherworldly. And I think that's an important quality 